Today, I am in the state of Maryland, just down the road from Bethesda Naval Hospital, I'm getting ready to go into the National Museum of Health and Medicine. Now you might think health and medicine, that's more in the sciences, not necessarily history, but there's a lot of history behind this place. Uh, it was started in 1862 during the Civil War by the Surgeon General at the time. And uh, I believe originally it was called the Army Medical Museum. And the purpose was to set up an installation where they could collect, gather information about battlefield injuries and the effects of artillery and bullets on the human body and uh, things like amputations. Sounds pretty interesting, uh, to be honest. This comes highly recommended from a friend of mine that was here. I've never been here, so uh, we're gonna go inside and check it out and see what they have. So the guy at the front told me that the museum's kind of divided up into anatomy and then also a little bit of like forensics and history. So we're gonna hit all of it anyway. So we'll hit the anatomy first and man, really interesting right off the bat they have this thing looking at the development of the human skeleton so this is a fetal skeleton at four months wow seven months eight months this is what a skeleton would look like at birth see the fontanels there it's commonly referred to as a soft spot that gives the uh, skull the ability to kind of move and form and pass through the birth canal and then you see the progression it closes up interesting so this one over here is a child at five years old okay so here's some crazy things from the 1800s that they would use to crack your skull open and uh, something from says 1890 a Loggenbeck drill and burrs oh my gosh that looks primitive uh, but this is kind of cool here this is a 3d printed prosthetic where uh, they would use it to replace a section of your skull that might have to be removed to allow for brain swelling. And then they pop that kind of transparent looking prosthetic back in place. Interesting. This is the skull cap of soldier in the Civil War where they were boring a hole in his skull to relieve some cranial pressure said that this was successful about half of the time uh, and it's, it's nothing new these are pre-columbian skulls and dear heavens they opened up some big old holes in those skulls that is horrifying okay and this is just a section all about the brain so this right here is a brain that had a ruptured skull the hemorrhage you get over here oh dude sharp force trauma this is a patient that got stabbed with scissors good in heavens yeah and they just got all kinds of brain things here oh my gosh here's one that had an ice pick wound to the skull and brain my gosh if you've ever wondered what a gunshot wound does to the brain there you go so here's an entire brain and spinal cord wow
Ever wonder what elephantitis will do to your leg? Ugh, well there you go, right there. That's what it does. All right, now this is pretty cool. Uh, this is looking at biomedical engineering, uh, more specifically prosthetics. And uh, probably what's most interesting to me here is this first one. This is called a Drake artificial leg from around 1866. So this would have been something for veterans of the Civil War who had been injured. Uh, and then this one right here belonged to a guy named Dewey G. Force, who stepped on a landmine, had his leg blown off, and then uh, got this prosthetic leg. Got it just before his wedding, so he was able to walk down the aisle. Interesting. And then here's another one. This one was made in 1960. Very, very interesting. And they got a few more here for the upper extremities. Some shoulder prosthesis. Here's another one. This is an uh, arm and hand that was made for a guy in World War II. His tank got struck by a rocket, lost his hand. Very, very interesting. All right, and here's some more prosthetics from the Civil War. Boy, that one in particular just looks really uncomfortable. Wow. And some prosthetic arms, again from 1864, for the wounded during the Civil War. Here's a forearm prosthetic. Another forearm prosthetic. Wow. If you've ever heard of boys or girls having cooties, well, there you go. That's a cootie. Okay, so here's kind of an interesting display on disease. So in the Civil War, yeah, there were thousands upon thousands that died. Most of the people who died, died from disease. So gangrene, things like that. And they have all kinds of examples that were collected. There's this, uh, here's one of a cranium gunshot wound. Uh, here's a section of femur that got hit by gunshot and then got osteomyelitis, which is, uh, you can think of as like a bone infection. All kinds of interesting pieces here. Wow, it's an elbow joint that got hit by a gunshot and then got gangrene. Whoa. These are all amputated limbs. My gosh, from gunshot wounds. Look at that one. Dear heavens. And then here's one that... Uh, got an infection. Wow! And then they had the same down here. Here's more amputated limbs. And man, look at just what that bone infection did. That is crazy. Huh. There's some more down here. Very, very interesting. So if you've ever watched the movie Glory about the 54th Massachusetts Volunteers, it was an African-American unit that uh, took part in the assault on Fort Wagner in Charleston, July 1863. Well, here is the skull of one of these soldiers that took part in that assault. And you can see there's a hole right through the middle of it where this particular soldier took an artillery round to the head. That is insane. Oh my gosh. Apparently somebody in the Civil War had the idea to build some body armor. Um, but didn't work out so well for him. Many balls punched right through it and killed him. This is from the Battle of Gettysburg. So there was body armor that people tried out during the Civil War, but 
this one unsuccessfully. Uh, and then down here, these are all bullets that were removed from some poor guy. <laughs> and all down here. This collection really, really is amazing. Here's some more Civil War pieces. This is from the Battle of Antietam. You can see right here where a bullet just grazed the skull and killed this poor guy. Good grief. Just unreal. Okay, this is from the Second Battle of Manassas or Second Battle of Bull Run. Somebody that got shot right above the right eye. More wounds to the looks like the femur. There's one to the humerus. Oh my gosh. Gosh, this is just horrifying. There's uh, from Gettysburg. The, this hand just looks particularly bad. But this might be the worst one I've seen yet as far as a skull in here. Just look at that. Oh. There's another one shot right through the hand that they had to amputate. Oh, this, this is Vicksburg, though. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, if you have an arterial bleed, rather than using a uh, tourniquet, you can use this clamp to stop the arterial bleeding. Look at that. There's a piece of a femur with the mini ball still lodged in it. Oh, here's another, here's another fascinating one. Cranium with the projectile still in it. Gosh, and look what this did. Insane. Here's kind of a sad story. This is a guy named Peter Cluckley who had some chronic rheumatism that affected nearly every joint in his body. Got to the point where nearly every joint in his body was fused to where he couldn't move. That's that's awful. Okay, looking at some different, I guess, birth defects. Wow. There's a couple of conjoined twins. Yeah, it's just kind of sad, actually. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but I, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now here. Okay, apparently that specimen that I just looked at that I couldn't figure out is a fetus with anencephaly. Okay, so this is actually kind of interesting. These are two little cloth fragments from a guy named John Callis that was shot at Gettysburg. The bullet blew the cloth fragments into his body and then 18 weeks later his body discharged him. Wow. Uh, so I've been showing all of this insane stuff that's in this museum. What I'm getting ready to show next trumps it all. The, this is the absolute coolest thing in the entire museum. So, April 14th, 1865, Lincoln and his wife go to Ford's Theater to catch a play called Our American Cousin, and of course, John Wilkes Booth slips up behind him and shoots Lincoln in the back of the head with this bullet right here. That is the bullet that was fired out of the Derringer that killed Abraham Lincoln. Wow. Uh, not only that, these are bone fragments from the skull of Abraham Lincoln. And uh, the doctor that treated him was a guy named Edward Curtis. Um, these are the sleeve cuffs that he wore on that night, stained with Abraham Lincoln's blood. And then you come over here. This is the probe that was used to locate the bullet in President Lincoln's head wound. And then these are locks of Lincoln's hair that were pulled from the head wound. My 
gosh. There are a lot of crazy things in here. That is definitely at the top. Unreal. Okay, so that was the National Museum of Health and Medicine. Uh, it might take a few days for my brain to fully process everything that I saw in there. It's a small museum, uh, but man, it is packed with all kinds of interesting things. I, I didn't even show a fraction of what they have in there. Um, and of course, the, uh, the, the medical pieces from the assassination of Lincoln were by far the, the most interesting. That's not to say the other stuff wasn't interesting. It, it was fascinating, but horrific, educational. I don't know. There's all kinds of adjectives to describe this museum. It's in Silver Springs, Maryland. Uh, it's free, and it is definitely worth a stop. I, I learned a lot today. So, uh, going to be in D.C. for a few days. So, got a whole bunch of videos that are going to be forthcoming from uh, from this little excursion. Oh, I'm, I wonder what this could be. Oh, it's a glass hospital urinal. Oh, for the love, don't break that thing.